Hello everyone, welcome to MESS e-learning channel. So today we are going to continue with our topic nano science and nanotechnology. As you know, this is nothing but a series of videos and this particular part is nothing but the third video in of the same series. But before going to this third video, let us have a quick recap of the topics that we have covered in the previous two videos. Here is the list. So first we had introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology. Next we had we studied the surface to volume ratio. After that we had the two main approaches in the nanotechnology There is nothing but the top down and the bottom up approach. This was followed by important tools that were actually used in nanoscience and nanotechnology. The first one which we studied was nothing but the scanning electron microscope. This was followed by another important tool in nanoscience and nanotechnology which is the transmission electron microscope. In short, this is also known as TEM. And today we are going to study once again the certain important tools in nanoscience and nanotechnology and this is nothing but the category belonging to the scanning probe microscopes. In this category, we are actually having two microscopes and there is nothing but the scanning tunneling microscope and nothing but and the second one is nothing but the atomic force microscope. So this is what we are going to study today, the last one which I have marked over here. So now let us study the, the two types of microscopes that we are saying. There is nothing but the scanning tunneling microscope and the atomic force microscope. To start with, let us start the scanning tunneling microscope. So, once again a quick revision, a scanning tunneling microscope including the atomic force microscope, both of these are categories under the scanning probe microscopy technique. So, both of these microscopes are capable of atomic level resolution of the nano surface. To take it first, let us study the scanning tunneling microscope. Now here is a schematic of a sample and a probe which we have brought or rather a tip and this is nothing but a metallic tip and here is actually our sample. So our sample is based over here and this is where actually we have the tip of the probe. So just assume that this is the probe and this is the sample. The distance between the two is of the order of nanometers. So the distance which I am actually speaking of is nothing but this distance out over here. So as you can see that since this is the distance, there is actually one can say that there is this is nothing but a gap that is existent. And definitely suppose we are releasing electrons from the tip, how do we re release electron from the tip? I apply a suitable bias to this particular tip and I release electrons. But because of this potential barrier, we can expect that these electrons may not be able to reach over here. But it so happens quantum mechanics states that if this gap is very small, then in that particular case, there is a finite probability of finding the electrons on the other side of this barrier. And this is called as the quantum mechanical tunneling. And exactly the scanning, the scanning tunneling microscope works on this particular principle. So, as the diagram indicates, what we have is nothing but the sample over here and out over here we have nothing but the tip and the electrons actually tunnel through this and, and, and actually go to the sample. So, we can see a another diagram in the next slide. So, here is a schematic of the tip as well as the sample and the tunneling current and this is compared with the energy diagram which we have studied in the previous slide. So, over here what we have is nothing but the tip which is releasing the electrons due to the external bias that I have applied over here right? and here is the sample and over here what you see is nothing but the current. right? So, th it is this current that we are speaking of, the tunneling current that we are speaking of that is important in a scanning tunneling microscope. 
So, this particular current depends upon three parameters. One of the most important parameters is nothing but the tip position. The second important parameter is nothing but the applied voltage. As you know that we are actually applying a voltage between the tip and the sample. So, for example, let us say this is the tip and there is a sample. We are applying a voltage potential drop between these two. And the third thing is nothing but the local density of states that is existing in the sample. So, once we determine these three particular parameters, we can get an idea about the, the quantity of the tunneling current. So, let us now see how we get the topography of a nanomaterial using STM. So, first of all, I focus the tip of the STM in a very narrow region. So, this, this region can be as narrow or as small as an atom, for example. So, this is the very first step that is the focusing. Next is I scan this particular surface. Now, while scanning this particular surface, let us assume that there is a bump, something like this. So, I see that suppose I am moving it this way, suddenly there is going to be an increase in the current and once again there is a going to be a decrease in the current. So, and this is not a feasible thing. So, what I do is I scan in such a way that I maintain a constant distance between the topographical surface right, and the tip. So, that the current, the tunneling current is always maintained of the same magnitude and it is this current that is ultimately converted into a topographical image. One of the biggest disadvantages one can say of STM is that it cannot you cannot get an image of a non-conducting surface because as you know that a non, in a non-conducting surface the local density of states will be highly negligible and the tunneling current will be extremely less. So, this is one of the greatest limitations of STM and what are the advantages of an STM as compared to SEM or as, as compared to TEM? One of the biggest advantage which I see is this that you will actually be able to resolve even at the atomic level which may not always be possible in a SEM or a TEM. There is another ad biggest advantage of STM and that is nothing but that is there is no such thing as aberrations. So, for example, in SEM and TEM since we are using magnetic lenses we will be having various types of aberrations, but over here since this is a, there is nothing but a tip and the surface there is no aberration as such and this is once again one of the biggest advantage of the STM. Having finished with STM that is the scanning tunneling microscope the next type of microscope is nothing but the atomic force microscope. So, basically uh, atomic force microscope gives us almost atomic level resolution. So, it gives us a lateral resolution of the order of 1 angstroms and a vertical resolution of the order of 0.1 angstroms. This is a very versatile device that is AFM and it can actually resolve both small as well as large surfaces with equal resolution and not only that, but it can also resolve even wet surfaces. This is one of the biggest one of the biggest advantages of AFM. Now, this now what is the principle behind it? This the, the main principle is nothing but it is nothing but an opto mechanical device and it can measure very small forces of the order of pico newtons that is of the order of let us say 10 raised to minus 12 newtons. And not only that one of the biggest advantages so, the first advantage that we studied was it can even resolve wet surfaces and this here comes the second advantage that we do not require any vacuum for the operation of an AFM. So, now let us see how an AFM functions. Here is a schematic diagram of an AFM. One of the basic one of the basic component of an AFM is nothing but the cantilever tip. So, this is basically your cantilever tip which is there that actually and here is a sample below that and actually moves 
the sample actually, it, it scans the sample. Now, as you know that AFM is nothing but the opto-mechanical device. So this is the mechanical part of it and what is the optical part of that? We have a laser that actually falls, a laser beam falls over here on the cantilever. And as the tip moves, the deflection of these tips are captured by a series of photodiodes which are placed over here. So this deflections combined with the XY scanner that is happening, right, both of these will result into a 3D topography of the actual nano surface. Now one thing which is very important to mention out over here, the interactive forces that exist between the sample and the tip of the cantilever and these interactive forces can be, now at times they can be electrostatic, they can also be magnetic, they can, they can be mechanical and at times they can also be van der Waals forces. So depending upon the strength or rather depending upon the amount of these forces, the quantity of these forces, the deflection of the cantilever will change accordingly and this will be registered by the, by the photodiode and ultimately this will be projected as a 3D image of the surface. So this is how basically an AFM functions. Now, when AFM works, it actually works in two modes. One is the contact mode and another one is nothing but the non-contact mode. Let us see more about this in the next slide. So in the contact mode or the constant force mode, the AFM monitors the deflection of the cantilever head. So this is it. We have this in this particular example, this is nothing but the schematic of the contact mode or the constant force mode of operation of AFM. In the second case which we have which is also known as the non-contact mode or also called as the tapping mode, the AFM monitors the movement of the scanning head in such a way so that the deflection is maintained constant. And it is this which is called as the tapping mode or the non-contact mode of operation. One of the biggest advantages of AFM over the scanning tunneling microscope is that the AFM does not require the presence of a conducting medium or a conducting sample because it does not generate any current unlike that in STM which actually generates a tunneling current. So this is one of the biggest advantages of AFM over STM. And not only that, but it does not require any vacuum for its operation. So this is where we have completed the AFM part. Here is an example of the 3D profile of a nanomaterial sample of that is taken using a AFM. Next we are going to study the differences between SEM which is an example of an electron microscope and AFM which is an example of a scanning probe microscope. So here are the differences that we are going to study. The very first difference is that a SEM image is nothing but a 2D projection of the topography whereas in the case of an AFM image it is nothing but a 3D profile of the entire specimen or the specimen that we are taking into consideration for the characterization. The second important difference between the two is that in the case of SEM, suppose the sample is not conducting, you actually need to coat it with a particular sample, with a particular layer of a, of a conducting material. Such a kind of coating is not required in the case of an AFM because you know it will actually cater even to non-conducting surfaces, it, it can characterize non-conducting surfaces as well as conducting surfaces. So this is where AFM scores over SEM. The third important point is an SEM actually will require or an SEM machine, an SEM instrument will actually require a very high amount of vacuum which may, which may range from let us say 10 raise to minus 6 to 10 raise to minus 9 tor whereas 
for the operation of AFM, no such vacuum is actually required. So this is once again one of the biggest advantages of, uh, uh, of an AFM over, over SEM. One of the fourth point of differences between the SEM and the AFM is that a SEM uses electrons for resolution of the nanomaterial surface. Whereas in the case of AFM, which is nothing but a mechanical optical device, we use a cantilever and a tip. And the last important point of difference between SEM and AFM is that in the case of SEM, that is a scanning electron microscope, the secondary electrons which actually make up the SEM image, the, the wavelength of this particular electrons is very small and that is the reason why the resolution is much, much better. On the contrary, in the case of AFM, the resolution of the sample is dependent or rather it, it is in fact limited due to the radius of curvature of the tip. And this is where actually the SEM scores over the AFM. So with this, we have finished up with the case of, you know, the nanomaterial tools, the scanning probe microscope, basically the scanning tunneling microscope and the, the atomic force microscope. So the, as you know that the scanning, scanning tunneling microscope works on the principle of quantum mechanical tunneling, whereas a uh, atomic force microscope actually works on this, it is actually works on the, on the principles of a uh, mechanical optical principles, wherein light actually falls on the on a cantilever, rather a laser light falls on the on the cantilever and the deflections of the cantilever along with the scanning, along with the XY scanning gives you an idea about the topography, the 3D profile of a nanomaterial. In the case of uh, STM, we require actually a vacuum, but in the case of AFM, no such vacuum is actually required. And STM image can go, the resolution of an STM image can go right up to the atomic level, one of the biggest advantages of, uh, of an STM. Whereas such a kind of resolution may be limited in the case of an AFM, this as you know is limited by the radius of curvature of the tip. And last but not the least, what we have is in, an STM scores very badly in the analysis of non-conducting samples because this will give rise to a very small current, the tunneling current. Whereas as compared to this, there is no such current generation, there is no such you know, current generation between the tip and the surface in the case of an AFM. So even non-conducting samples, even they can go, give a very good high resolution 3D profile. So this is where actually we have finished up with, the, with this particular topic. I hope you have understood all of these topics. Thank you for your attention.